Welcome back to a thief's training. <laughs> Ouch. Is that three health pips down or is that four? I don't know. Interpreter's tower, it says it right there. Okay, we're going to go back to the stairs then. Stairs. Where were the stairs? See, there were two of you here. I thought there was only one of you down here. So I uh, flubbed that rather badly. Oh well. I guess I have written signs that say Garrett was here in. Sorry, I've written Garrett and he was here in signs that all can read from Siric to Bone. Alright, well, I was just wondering how many health bits I had left. It's now certainly sufficient. Let me read this. Chronicle of Interpreters, Interpreters, Verderosa. Verderosa became an interpreter in 622 and contributed greatly to her office. Verderosa introduced the concept of before us, always allowing for two interpretations to be discussed with the wider council before deciding on a path. This democratization of glyph interpretation is considered revolutionary by many and dangerous by some. The valuable interpretations of corruption in the Witam, the De Tremolé conspiracy and the Great Fire of 615 are attributed to Bedarosa. Bedarosa trained two translators during her tenure. Bedarosa died in 641, and the council voted unanimously for her remains to be buried in the crypt beneath her tower with her prized keeper medallion. Well, that was worth reading then. So what I do need now is to remind myself of where the thing doorway was. There. Of course. <laughs> Alright, just now I'll just descend. Of course, knowing the keepers, they're gonna probably have traps or something. Right? They're not just gonna leave the crypts. Available for any just unguarded, right? I mean, I guess I don't know. Interpreter Verderosa. To interpret is to see one's dream and weave its meaning from afar. Hmm. And who's this? Third Keeper Maya. Our burden. Is not for the dependent of spirit. Right, that's the one I can see from the courtyard. Maybe there is not much of a crypt, it's just ceremonial burial for a, a select few. Why is there water here? Why is there another passage? Or two? Or three? What is the same statue as she has? You don't see such a statue down these paths. Let's... Avoid the light. Oh yes, okay. It's not so hard to do. 
Well, so you telling me to do it is suspicious. It's a door. Wait, there's more crypts? There's a ladder. Hello. This is the middle of the uh... <laughs> Keeper Tower, isn't it? Chapter Meeting, 6 of Crimson Wayne, 831, presided over Elder Delbrick. Item 1, Disappearance of Keeper Dagon. Elder Delbrick took the floor. We are all deeply shocked and saddened by Keeper Dagwin's disappearance. His surveillance activities in the Pontus district came with great dangers, and we suspect he may have fallen afoul of a Tremolay network. I ask the chapter for their views on a search party to be dispatched forthwith. All Keepers in attendance voted unanimously in favour of a search party to be organised. Keepers Ramiro and Bryce volunteered. Item 2, Pagan Conspiracy. Keeper Rowan took the floor. It is recommended that surveillance activities of wardens be increased. We believe a pagan infiltration of one or more wardens is the most likely strategy to gain a foothold in the city and obtain the items of importance for the schemes. Webster de Wall, Asimlag, and Ramirez should be prioritised. Okay, I don't see anything else that I need in here, so... Wait, where am I? Is this the chapter house? Maybe the chapter house, not the council tower. In which case, I have not been here before. Yeah, right, I saw this glowing this passageway through a window from above. Hmm. Okay, well, let's come back here afterwards, I suppose. Let's remain on our cryptic search. What happens if I do not avoid the light? That's what happens, okay. Good to know. Useful. It's just a hole, just a... Way up. Odd. Where are these skylights coming from? All oh, right, that's the the little kind of ventilation. Like the towers are sort of ventilation, I guess. They're ventilating the crypt. No, they had they had covers. Well, no wonder it's uh, all wet in here. It rains, water comes in. There's no drainage. Stay in the shadows. All right. Yeah, that's a good reason to stay in the shadows. So that's the that's the medallion. Okay. All I have to do is leave now. Uh, that wasn't that wasn't the uh, chapter house. Okay, so that's a little. Wait, this was the way the library. This one. This one. This one. Getting all turned about. We might see if there's any more valuables, but we have what we came for. We we don't have. Oh. Huh? This one wasn't ticked off before about Sigurd and Radbot. To steal from my old pals to keep us try and find more information. I don't know how when that got ticked off. I don't remember finding anything more about it. I have no idea what which piece of information I have was supposed to be there. More than. I wonder how 
side open. So should I leave it on this side or something? Seems not. That. Well, also, there does not seem to be anybody here in the chapter house, so. Well, there are people wandering around. Within any shots of the outside, anyway. Chapter House Key. Initiate training records, 820s. Mytel, recruited by Orland. No issues to report. Skilled swordsman. Mercedes, recruited by Hellman. Promising, but lacks balance. Nikanda, recruited by Artemis. Leadership skills, moves on scene. One to watch. Expunge the entry on Mercedes from the training records. Elder Dalberic. I kind of thought they were just coming into this room, but... Nope. I have no idea where they are, but... Uh... Sounds just leaking through from uh, beside. Hello. It does seem like there might be something up this ladder. Oh, that's the uh, peephole that I look in from before. Okay. What about this one? But like the sound is not propagating through that people, which would make sense because then it would at least sound like it was coming from there, not like it was coming straight through the walls. Ah, chapter house key, of course. All right, well we have a few uh, places here to explore, so I didn't find those jewels, and that bothers me. So basically, all of this area on this floor I haven't been in, I guess. So let's... Spilling ink on such an ancient text. Simply unforgivable. Right, we did come in here before off the upper floor. This is the small reading room? Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, well that answers my... Uh... Well, it doesn't answer my questions about why there was a secret in the other room that was nothing at all. But I guess they may have many places to stash goods. Alright, well... Done. Sorted. Okay, that's the small reading room there. Not this one. There is a secret niche empty. So I guess we should keep that, uh, that annotation here. It's a small reading room. myself say like an absolute pro. How did he see me when it was this dark? The question is, did he alert anybody else with that noise? Or did I alert anybody else with my running? Doesn't really sound like it. Okay, map again. That's this door to the main hall. Alright, so we just need to search these rooms. I guess we get out the way we came. Leave the area when done, yeah. A seemingly mundane update during this morning's chapter meeting has deeply troubled me. Instructor Maban provided the elders with an update on recent initiatives he implemented to improve the efficiency and output of the scribes. 
We provided softer cushioning for the seats, more candles, and increased the capacity of the ink wells. On the first day of introducing these changes, Instructor Mavan observed the scribes and noted a significant improvement in output. However, on the second day, Instructor Mavan left the scribes unsupervised, and when he returned at the end of the day, the output had dropped to the levels observed before any changes were introduced. Whilst Instructor Mavan seemed puzzled by this, it is clear to me that it was the mere act of observation which improved the efficiency of the scribes. While this may seem trivial, it gives rise to the idea that observation can alter the behaviour or affect the outcome of that being observed. How much of our work is affected by our presence, and what dangers does this pose to the prophecies? I intend to experiment further on this tonight, starting with observation of glyphs. I may even discuss disturb Keeper Facetis from his telescope upstairs. He may be able to shed some light. Yes, it's maybe physics you want to look into, not, not merely astronomy. Oh, yes, yeah, I'll take those too. I need not have worried about the loot goal. We are a thousand above it already, and I'm sure probably still like at least 500 below what we might be able to get. Where's he going anyway? North. Okay, he's going up around the council tower. Oh, there's more than one here. Well, that's just bad for me. Do you want to check the entrance hall? Oh, and you've got money on you. I do appreciate greatly that despite being a daylight mission, I mean, I suppose the Keeper place isn't super daylight, but they, they've, like, my complaints about the room brushing aside, they're very thoughtful about light and shadow. Doesn't look like there's anything in the entrance hall worth my attention. Okay, this is the, hello. I was going to say this is a place I've been, but no, where am I? This is... I thought I came down here. South. I'm looking south. Am I here? Yeah, I must be. Okay, that goes then... South the Council Tower. Yes, it looks like we can. Council Tower, okay. And this is the door then into the courtyard. Indeed, okay. Right. So, and he's going off, off that way, which I don't care about. I mean, I guess the Council Tower is where I want to be next anyway, so... That doesn't here. Oh, let us... They don't understand. You cannot hide your. Ah. <clears throat> I don't know how he suddenly reacted to me. Maybe that's the stepping out into the light and he uh, noticed me because of the patterns of light and shadow there. Oh well. Clumsily done, but it was resolved. I guess I go west to so these rooms and then come around to these other rooms. Wait a minute, this is just the main hall again, what? Oh wait, what came out? What? Well that's stupid of me. Well we can resolve it, it's, uh, it's no problem. Just not leave him there to be found. Yeah, Council Tower. Oh yes, I thought I'd gone one passage further 
further west, but I have not. Right, that's the guy walking in there. I could hear from all the way up there, I see. This is a little odd. There's no wood. You can't rope your way around here. I mean, it's kind of nice design-wise, but not particularly functional. Well, this guy presumably doesn't know I'm here, so let's leave it that way. Hello, what have we got? On the mystery of the vanishing of the youths of Shalebridge. Source unknown, but retold here by Keeper Adelard, based on investigations of anecdotal accounts of the older residents of Shalebridge. Here follows an astonishing affair arising in Shalebridge in the year 421 of the reign of Baron Black, on the Feast of St. Tancred. A woman, undeterminable in age, pulchritudinous, and adorned in finery, so that any accursed enough to lay eyes upon her venerated her because of her facade, crossed street, bridge, water, and field, and through, enter through Shalebridge Gate to but catch a glimpse. The lady then began to sing all through the district with a voice so alluring that all who heard began to follow. Stranger still, the spectral singing appeared to only affect the youths of Shalebridge, boy and girl alike, who trailed the lady like shadows at noon. Youths of the number of 37 vanished in this flight of folly, with no trace ever to be found. Wailing from Shalebridge was heard never to cease for twelve years and a day, until all hope of a return of the 37 was abandoned. Is this what we have come to? Rely come to? Relying on old wives' tales from Shalebridge to fill up your pages. Please find at least one written source for this, or it will need to be destroyed. Elder Delbrick. Look, man, documenting uh, oral myths is how they become written sources. Okay, you thought he might have. Oh, this is this room. This is the Greetings Young Garret room. And this tower just leads. This is just. It's just a stair leading up, right? Right, it's just a stairway. Okay. Well, that's inconvenient for me because I need to be on the. Oh, so that room up there, and I feel like this is no place for you. Be gone, whoever you are. Well, I should get out of here. Before he comes back. Hang on. Where's this? I did not come in this way. Furnace's History of the City, Volume 1. Although no surviving historical records deal directly with the founding or building of the city, tradition and folklore have led several historians to agree that the original population of the city consisted of refugees from neighbouring regions and the undefended countryside, fleeing some as yet not unknown catastrophe. Indeed, rumours abound of an ancient civilization, the remains of which may have formed the foundation of our current great city. Dear reader will be glad to learn that I intend to investigate this topic in considerable detail in Volume 2. More on this anon. In time, the seven great founding families selected the first baron and established the great institutions to govern the city. While there remain some disputations on who comprised the seven families, it is generally accepted by reputable historians to comprise the houses of Black, Bresling, De Baron, Grand Warden, Murad, Rutherford, and Quintus. Recommend that Fanacti's work on the city's history be closely monitored. Should he stray too near the truth, exercise appropriate response. Elder Dalbaric. Is this the way I came in? Hang on. Oh no, right, I've come into this room. Oh, I came in through the side door there. Right. Well, I guess there's no problem there. I mean, I need to be on the lookout for valuables. 
not just plants. Right, yes, that's the door. I came in through. Okay. Also means I need to be on the lookout for other wanderers who might set me. Hello. Well, these passages are familiar too. So that's the council tower. And we are back here at the uh, sleeping quarters. Okay. Did I check that room? I have not been in that room, I don't think. In the council tower. The rise and fall of the great banking families of the city. By Keeper Eliadar. The history of three of the largest banking families to exist in the city is one of complexity, corruption, and catastrophe. The houses of Romegos, de Tremolet, and Rosini grew to become the dominant financiers of the city over the course of 300 years, largely benefiting from increased maritime trade with Bone and Syric. The banking families facilitated trade by providing bills of exchange for merchants. Finance was not the only source of the family's power. Family connections through marriages of convenience also secured powerful relationships and access to upper society. Indeed, the families became so wealthy and powerful that the barons considered, considered them a threat with some of their castles and palaces confiscated under the pretense that fortified castles on the city's boundaries were a danger in private hands. The decline of the families took place over a prolonged period of time, with many factors playing a role. Firstly, the families overextended lending to Baron Black's wars, which he failed to repay. However, this was not the sole reason for their collapse, as continued wars had disrupted the network of trade both within and without the city. To confound the family's misfortunes, successive generations of barons sought ways to limit their power and eventually established the Baron's Bank to serve as a municipal bank which managed the public debt of the city and financed the ongoing wars, diminishing the stranglehold the private banking houses had on the city. There is, of course, the matter of the de Tremolet conspiracy, but that will require its own term for further extrapolation. However, despite the change in fortunes for the banking families, they continue to figure among the prominent families of the city and regularly hold positions of power, including infiltration of institutions such as the Witan, the Baron's Police, and even amongst the Hammerite Order. Any other books or valuables? No. Alright. Then I think I have at last been everywhere and we can head back out the way we came. To the obstacle course. I knew it was through this door, but we will never find out. Souvenir. <laughs> well, obviously, the other stuff I will pawn. Hey, we'll keep this and piss in it to show our regard. Hang on, does this go anywhere? Gotta get down the proper way. <laughs> I missed the rope entirely. Right, hang on, that's the way I came in, of course. Foolish. Right, and this doesn't go anywhere, and this way is a dead end. Okay. Well then, let us take a souvenir and, uh... I'm gonna put some flowers in it instead of pissing in it, you know? Oh, wait, how am I gonna get out? Easier said than done. Look, yeah, I still have some ropes. To 
the streets, I suppose. Oops. Not intend to jump off that ladder. Beautiful town. Well, that was well, that was a, a shorter episode than the previous ones, but that's fine. Um, up now, it's we're not quite short enough to fold into the previous one. I don't know, whatever. I'll figure it out later. That was the thief's training. Um, yeah, a lot of really nice to look at architecture there. Um, Good use of light and shadow. Really, really problematic sound. Uh, room brushing, I think. The sound propagation in the Keeper area was just not good for playing thief with, for sneaking, listening to guards, supporting them, making noise or not. Um, I guess it's fine. How do we do? Yeah, that's over 500 loot not found. I do wonder about that secret I found. Oh, there's three more I didn't find. Wow. Okay. I do wonder about the one I found, which had nothing in it. That was weird. I feel like that might be a bug. Like, it was a, uh... Uh, I forget what it's called now. The trap that hides the stuff until you actually believe it so that you can't prop it through paintings and stuff. Um... Might have not been hooked up properly or something. I don't know. Weird. Anyway, that one aside, there's at least three more secrets I didn't find, which is probably a fair portion of that 500 loot. And I probably missed some other stuff here and there, hidden away in corners. Um, yeah. Very good mission. It's very nice to go back to uh, Keeper's place. I think, I mean, I've been, I've been, in, I've been played, I've been in, I've played many missions before that had a room modelled after the one you see in the cutscene with the Interpreter's Tower. Right, several, uh, at least two, th I think three other missions I've played have had a room like that. I don't think I've played one before that actually takes the training room, the obstacle course, and puts you back in it. I'm sure it's been done, but uh, not, not that I remember playing, so... Uh, it may... But I enjoyed that. Um, yeah. Uh, pretty good mission. That's it. Uh, well, uh, thanks for watching, and I guess I'll see you here sometime, hopefully soon, for the next mission.